uh, Joe Douglas, the GM of the Jets. He kind of had a state of the Jets uh, the other week when we were off, so he's nice enough to join us now on the phone. Uh, Joe, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? Great, guys. How's it going? Uh, going well. First thing I want to ask, not even a Jet question, you know, you were involved with the Eagles for a long time. Is that a tough game for you to watch? I mean, do you still have feelings for those players and the, and the coaching staff? You know, um, last three years were, were great years uh, there in Philadelphia, and you know you still have a lot of strong bonds and relationships there, and you you find yourself pulling for those guys, and you know just uh, the way their season ended, you know the the uh, toughness that they showed, and uh, you know I know uh, you know I know the game yesterday, you know didn't end uh, like they wanted it, they wanted it to end, but you know they had a great finish this season, and I'm sure they'll uh, be back up and running again next year. You know, it's interesting. For for you, Joe, it's, you're entering your second season with the Jets, but you're getting your first draft and you're getting your first off season to work on things. So does it kind of feel like the job begins now for you? You know, that's a good question because I feel like I feel like the job actually the, the job definitely began in January, but I feel like now is the time where where a lot of a lot of guys that get hired they get hired around this time, so they they had to hit the ground running and assess a new team, assess a new staff, get get their processes in place. I feel like I've had since June to really get that, so it's not as rushed um, as it would be for someone getting hired right now. But yeah, no, we we are we are so excited to get this offseason uh, rolling um, you know we've uh, we had some we had great meetings at the end of last week with our coaching staff we're getting ready to start this uh, these all-star games with the east-west shrine game the senior bowl and uh, you know xfl is, is uh, starting their preseason so we'll be down there scouting there so we are we're, we're hitting the ground running with our offseason joe douglas jets gm is our guest here on the show so you talked about the eagles good finish your team finished well as well at six and two uh, some of those wins against bad teams. Um, so I'm just wondering, what, what are we supposed to make out of that after a team starts 1-7? and seven, What does 6-2 and two mean, Joe? Does it have any standing to you as you look forward uh, uh, to try to build this team back? Yeah, I mean, you say bad teams. I mean, it's the NFL. I mean, it's not I, going six and two. To me, it's not a fluke. I mean, um, we, we played we played much better down the stretch. I think um, again, I can't say enough good things about the job that those guys in the locker room did and the coaching staff did to, to keep it all together. And even even at our lowest point when things were one and seven, those guys were working so hard every day to get better. There there was no wavering. There's no backing down. You know, you you go back and you look look at the, uh, what we were able to do in, the, in in our six and two stretch, especially, you know, our, our our defense battled all year. Our offense really improved, really really made strides uh, down the stretch, and the the growth of the quarterback, the growth of the growth of the offense, the growth of the team. You could really see it in those last eight games. Now, obviously, health was a major factor. You know, losing your quarterback the way you did certainly hurt the start of the season because I'm sure he was sick on opening day, right? You just don't all of a sudden get mono the, that Tuesday after the game, so it probably affected the game against the Bills. So that probably had a lot to do with your 7-9 and nine record. But what I, I have difficulty getting around, Joe, and I just want you to address it. You, there's no excuse to lose to Miami and Cincinnati when you did. So how, how do you make sure that doesn't happen again? Because those are two losses that it, it's hard to blame injuries on considering – where those teams were when you played them. Those those loss hurt. Uh, every loss hurts. Um, you know what we've got to do is just make sure that we, we, we. There's growth. There's there's growth in a team, and so as we mature, as we as we are together more, um, you just learn that you, there's no one there's no one in this league you can take for granted. No matter their record, no matter no matter their rankings, there's not a single team in this league you can ever take for granted. And uh, you know our our mission is is to you know to never to, to never um, be in those situations where, um, you know, where we do that. All right, Joe, th this is a question that a lot of Jet fans always ask us. We don't have the answer. It, uh, we're trying to interpret things from the outside. You guys have the answers. You're inside. It doesn't seem like Coach Gase loves Le'Veon Bell. And there were rumors before he was signed that he didn't want him signed for that money, didn't think a running back should get that sort of money. Is Le'Veon Bell somebody that you want to build this program around, or are you up for trading him, and will you investigate that? You know, every time I've seen I've seen Adam and Lev uh, together, it's always been a positive interaction that I've witnessed. So, um, you know, I haven't I haven't seen all these 
all, all these rumors that have been I haven't seen it firsthand. Okay. Um, my, my interactions with Lev have been all positive, and, the, and those interactions, like I said, between him and Gates that I've seen, have all been positive. You know, Le Le'Veon, Le'Veon is a is a very good player. Le'Veon's ha had a really good preseason. Now he didn't play any preseason games, but we we saw him at practice every day. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the production of our offense as a whole, you know, it was it wasn't good enough, especially early early in the season. Um, but you know. We, we value Le'Veon, and we value the competitor, we value the teammate. So you know, we're excited of him being in the off, being in our program another year, going through our offseason again, being like every other team teammate on teammate on offense, and um, showing the ability to, to grow um, like uh, like they showed throughout the, the back half of the year. Now everything ended up working out by the end of the year for Jamal Adams. He was totally on board. But in the in the beginning, there were the tweets, and I know you guys aren't on Twitter, but you had to acknowledge the fact that there were some incidents where it just didn't feel like he was completely on board. Is is that in the rearview mirror now? You guys all on the same page? You feel like he is somebody moving forward as a leader on this football team? Yeah, no, I said I said in the press conference last week because that that question was brought up. We had a great conversation after the trade deadline. We had an unbelievable conversation last week after the, uh, in the exit meetings. Um, I firmly believe that everything everything's in the rearview mirror. Uh, we're we're just looking forward and um, just excited that he's a part of the team. The way he finished this year, like so many guys on our team, I mean, he he was he was one of our better pass rushers. He's all over the field. I'm sure you guys see he's he's an un unbelievable player. And uh, we're so excited he's a Jet. All right. There's going to come a time where you, you're going to have to decide whether you want to sign him. The, the Bears kind of set the market for safeties with Eddie Jackson getting over $15 million a year. Are those awarders you want to swim in for a safety? And is the safety that important that you'd pay him that much money? Yeah, no, so those those are the conversations. Those, those are the things that we talk about in our meetings. And, you know, like I said before, like, we – we are so happy that Jamal's here. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into specifics of any contract talks or uh, negotiations. But you know, um, I mean, you, all you have to do is watch watch on Sunday to see the difference that he makes, uh, not only on our defense but on our team. All right. How about your quarterback? Uh, once he was healthy, it was tough to assess the season as a whole. But do you feel comfortable that he's going to progress? Because you look at the, you look at Watson, you look at Allen and their playoff performances. I mean, do you feel that he's ready going into this third year to be the franchise quarterback that was drafted by this team? I think you guys saw that down the stretch, just the improvements that he made, and you know. The, the the great the, the best one of the best things I've seen this season is just him growing, him being able to put the games like the first, the New England game in his rearview mirror um, and just and just move forward and the mental psychological toughness that he shows uh, uh, day in day out week in week out being a, being able to learn from mistakes his natural leadership skills I saw unbelievable growth from Sam and you know I think he has he has uh, innate leadership qualities guys gravitate towards him and guys respect him for 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 what he's all about as, as a player as a person so um i i'm so excited to get this offseason going for for him to get back to him get back with his teammates and uh and really and really uh take get this offense off the ground and and, and going for 2020 joe douglas the jets gm is our guest here on the michael k show uh, timetables differ uh, and as don said earlier this is the first time you're gonna have a chance to really put an imprint on this team jet fans are impatient so you finish the season at seven and nine how far away is this program from competing to be playing this weekend and last weekend how close is it joe in your opinion I mean, the, fan, the fans are impatient. We're, we're, we're just as impatient. We want to get this thing to where it should be, uh, competing for Super Bowls every year. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to sit here and put a timetable. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I can, I can, all I can do is, is, is promise the fans that we're, we are going to work relentlessly to improve not only the, the talent on this team but the makeup character of this team and, uh, and, and really this, like I said in the press conference, the finish of this year, we want it to be a, a launch pad for next year ha moving forward. Have you thought about, is there one specific need you're thinking about as you prepare for this draft, as you scout college players and say, this is the number one area we need to fill? 
Well, I think I think there's a lot of needs that we we're going to be attacking, um, and we're going to look we're going to look at every avenue to do it. You know, whether it's whether it's free agency, whether it's the XFL pro scouting, uh, you know, whether it's the college draft. But uh, you know, I, we're we're gonna we are going to improve uh, multiple positions. Got to ask you one thing. You're, you're always honest with us. Do you really believe that coming off the flu that Le'Veon Bell bowled a 251? That was. It's hard to believe. I mean, that's, it's hard to believe. That's like that's like a big Earn McCracken type performance. That's like <laughs> it, a true, it's bigger. true MVP. Like, that, that's that's unbelievable. And in man. red like, leather pants, we hear. I mean, it's just orange leather. I, 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 I didn't see the pictures. Okay, so I can't I can't confirm or deny the red leather pants. But that that even if that's true, that his street cred just went through the roof. With, if you if you go with the red leather pants on top of the two fifty one, that's that's MVP caliber. Now during the off season, do you get any time to catch up with professional wrestling? Or are you still living kind of in the Stone Cold, The Rock era? I'm so far behind in my pro wrestling. I, I, uh, I need to catch up. I, I, I'm not, I'm not tapped in. Well, at the very least, you need the, the WWE Network so you can go back and watch all the classic matches. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You go back and watch. Uh, you know, I went back. I actually, uh, I got a little bored over the weekend. I mean, it, it's hateful when you're when you're not playing. I mean, the, the, there's only four teams that that enjoy not playing on this on this weekend that's the four teams that have the buy so anyway i got bored and i went back and watched undertaker's first match ever <laughs> so, oh there you go <laughs> just i just had to get back in the uh in the delorean and get get in the uh time time capsule and, and survivor series one. 1990 good survivor times Sear, survivor series that's right <laughs> you, you know it you know i it. sure did yeah, yeah, the, the, the heart foundation and uh and, uh greg valentine and uh and uh, Honky Tonk Man and uh, Dusty Rhodes with the Heart Foundation. Great call. Peter's your guy. I'm telling you, Joe. Peter's your guy. <laughs> One day we'll have an old school recall. viewing night. We'll have a little, we'll get some popcorn. We'll turn on the network. Have a good time. Maybe in a bowling alley with Les. Oh, we can invite Levy on. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right, Joe. Thanks for coming on, man. Uh, all right, guys. Have we a appreciate good it. All that right, is Joe care. Douglas, 1 800 919 3776.